Okay, uh, so uh, we have a surprise today because in Sunrise we're honored to host a great musician, an artist, part of the Alt-J family, uh, Thon Sonny Green. Hey, Thon. Hi, I should just, it is pronounced Tom. It's just a silent H. Oh, it's, it's oh, I'm sorry. Yeah, that's okay, I just wanted to point out before. <laughs> yeah, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, that's that, that that's a good thing to find out before we before. <laughs> uh, so Tom, um, thanks for your time. Thanks for uh, taking time to. Uh, our, our podcast is still very humble, <laughs> but um, no worries. I'm happy to be here. Yeah, I I, uh, but I actually don't get that many requests. So if people ask me, I do it. You know. <laughs> really? Yeah. <laughs> I would. I would have thought. Uh, people ask you to, you know, participate and <laughs> podcast well, I, all the time. Yeah, I, 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 I stopped doing a lot of interviews like a few, uh, two or three years ago because I just burnt out from doing them. <laughs> yeah, and and well, so actually, I just... yeah, I can't imagine. Yeah, actually, we were thinking a lot about um, what kind of questions to ask you. And we decided not to go with this standard interview format, uh, like asking Wikipedia style questions, which you can easily Google or, you know, hear in other places, but rather talk to you as one of our regular guests, when maybe, of course, with quite irregular and exciting experience and perspective that you might have. Sounds uh, good. Yeah, sounds good. Um, okay. Don't hesitate to ask anything you want. You know, it's, it's, there's no... There's nothing that um, you can't ask. I might not answer it, but yeah. <laughs> <I'm joking. laughs> yeah. Okay. Uh, Arm, do you want to go ahead? Yeah, I want. I want. I want to ask this. Uh, when people think about like well-known bands, they imagine an easygoing life the members have. Uh, but in this case, we know that your Tom uh, has gone through a series of stressful events for a long time, but uh, as you told during a few occasions, you never lost the small chance to remain on the surface. And actually, I personally have gone through that time as well. Yeah. Uh, I had a depression and anxiety and so on back in 2016 and 2017. And keeping in mind your path actually helped me not to lose connection to the world as well. And and uh, and of course, I used to listen to OJ every day and your own solo songs, and for, especially Vienna. I used to listen to it like every day oh, wow. uh, during d during our uh, road trips and so on. Mm. I shall note your art has a huge therapeutic effect, indeed. And I just wonder, what do you think? Where it where it comes from that? Is that a necessity of that, or is that just there wouldn't be another way? I'm, I'm, yeah. Yeah, I think it's complicated because I, I, I've always been somebody that that feels like they need, I, like I feel like it's a need for me to, to, by by creating things and by being creative mm -hmm. and making. Ah, that's a way for me to process what is in front of me and the way that I perceive the world. Mm -hmm. And it's just how I interpret things. For me, it's 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 a way of analysis. You know, I, I exist in a certain way, and I feel things and perceive things, and I feel this need to convey what it is that I'm feeling or seeing, either through music or visual art or or, or playing video games or by the clothes that I choose to wear or everything really. It's a lot of it's subconscious behavior, obviously, but I think either that could come have come from a place of um, being very inward, you know, I, I, from very, in a very early age, I was very introspective and very closed off from people right? and not not necessarily deliberately a lot of it was a coping mechanism mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. and the way that you know the, what that does to somebody like myself it it 
it, it kind of um, enables this imagination and mm. um, you know at the moment like I, I've, I, I've been very very fortunate to have the opportunity to do uh, CBT therapy which I've been doing for a couple of years oh yeah really yeah um, and I've had various forms of therapy like throughout my life but they've never really clicked so I've had various like diagnosis of things and various counselors and people like that but it just never really never clicked they couldn't quite grasp what I was what was going on for me so mm-hmm. last couple of years I have managed to find a way to like make sense of who I am to the point where I'm, I'm less uncomfortable in my own skin yeah which is a, uh, very freeing uh I was excited listening that because I'm a CBT therapist myself. Ah. And, yeah, and uh, actually meeting with the uh, meeting with the uh, founder of CBT therapy with Aaron back in back in 2018 helped me a lot actually as well. Because you know when when you meet someone uh, who founded a uh, uh, theory which or, or or music or something else which helps you uh, some kind of ima- uh, amazing connection is established at that moment between you and between that uh, person mm-hmm. uh, who is in roots of that theory or of that music and so on so right now i have a similar feelings right <laughs> <can imagine>. uh, <laughs> that's <laughs> yeah. great <laughs> yeah. I had another question, which, uh, yeah, is actually also pretty personal. Um, cause I have, I have that maybe not to in that extent, but, um, so when, when you have this down times, basically when, um, you're looking for the energy for the motivation for inspiration to, um, and you can't find it, but you have to go to stage and perform and, you know, put your, uh, put the maximum from yourself. Uh, but, you know, you already have a problem finding this energy inside you. How, how do you, is, what, what's the tip? Do you, uh, is that, uh, is that something you've developed over time that you, you know, you learned how to say, okay, I need to go, I need to perform and mm. because you know being a musician is a pretty pretty um extroversial thing right because yeah. you have to share that energy on the stage um so yeah yeah that's a good question i mean it's, it's a good question because it's, it's quite a difficult one to answer i think i think it, it comes down to really being on being on stage for me like you said, it, it 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 is regarded as being quite an extrovert, uh, extroversial. Is that a word? Probably not. Um, it's something that extroverted people might be drawn to, and you might need a bit of that in you to be able to perform. But for me, it's actually very. Int- uh, I feel it's it's very. Um, <laughs> my introversion works well with it because as a drummer, I'm not having to speak or sing. Mm. And I can mm-hmm. really lock into what it is I'm doing. And for me, it's actually so that hour and 20 minutes, I'm, I'm, now that I've got to the point where I can actually literally play the set with my eyes closed, I, I don't need to look at where I'm placing my hands or where I'm hitting the drums because I've I've had this set up for uh, seven, eight years now. So I, and the amount of shows that we've done, it's muscle memory. So now, I actually feel very comfortable on stage. Like I don't ever get stage fright. I don't ever, I feel nervous before a show if it's been a while and I'm a bit nervous about my skill, like my like technical ability, if I'm going to have the stamina, the strength. Um, But it's say like when I'm back backstage behind the dressing room and I might not be feeling too great, you know, my mood might not be the best. I can't wait to get on stage and, and just completely lock in that's just the way that my mind 
works. Like I'm best, I perform best when I'm locked into something. And I think in psychology, they call it like flow. Yeah. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Where you find I'm very, I'm very, very fortunate. That I've found there's a couple of things which I, I feel like I'm in that flow state. And when I'm playing the drums, like it, it, it feels you know, I'm completely at one with, with the music, with my kit, and the way that it's designed. My drums, like you know, the use of no cymbals, it's all very low end, like bass, mm -hmm. low frequency, and it really, I really feel it. And my, you know, my seat has a. Uh, it's connected to an amplifier and it sends pressure into my body. So when I hit, say, the kick drum, my stool sends pressure up my back. And the same with every drum, different frequencies. So I'm literally connected and I have my in-ear monitors, which are completely, uh, you know, sealed, completely sealed. There's no ambient noise mm. with the, the yeah, incredible sure. kind of mixing from our monitor engineer. It sounds mm -hmm. phenomenal. It's like it's, it's like a drug. So when I'm playing, that's what I look forward to on tour the most. Like everything else, the the only reason I'm on tour is is to play. Is for those hour and twenty. There's other things which there's other things which I might enjoy, you know. But I'm not on holiday. Like I'm there to to play for those hour and twenty minutes. And to be honest, it's not long enough. And I some sometimes mm -hmm. come off stage. And I'm so like emotionally drained and so uh, riled up that mm -hmm. I, I don't know how I don't know what to do. Like I feel like I'm I get angry. I get like impatient with people. I get like I can't I can't just sit down and like sit slip back into like looking at my phone. Like I have to like have all this energy and it's there's nothing like that, you know. And I think about going on tour and I'll be honest, I I I. I I get nervous about a lot of it. Mm -hmm. um, somebody like myself, it's very difficult. And I, I've i learned to, you know, the only reason I can be there is for, the, it's for those hour and 20 minutes each night. But, yeah. Mm. That's, that actually sounds like a response from a person who's gone through uh, real therapy because um, what I, I mean, what I was having trouble with, it's, of course, it's not to that extent because my job is not that extroversial in the sense that um, you don't have to perform on a stage uh, against thousands of people. I'm, a, I'm an astrophysicist. Um, right. So, wow. you, you know, you have to provide talks, you have to advertise <laughs> yourself, your work. Yeah. So there, there, there is an element of that. And I really hated it. I really hated that yeah. social part of the mm -hmm. science because when you're actually doing science, um, you know, you're you're doing it all by yourself. You're spending right. time thinking on stuff. You're spending time I don't know, writing papers. But when you're advertising your work, that's a completely different story. Yeah. And you know, you, the completely different it's, skills you have to. Yeah, it's, um, it so sounds very. It sounds sounds similar in a way that like when you're what you're describing now, they kind of. Um, the, the more uh, the stuff you do alone, like and that's that's the stuff I enjoy. Like I, I not necessarily alone, you know, the, with my bandmates when we're working. It's just the three of us, and mm -hmm. we can focus. And we really are like we we're, we're like one brain when we're when we're in in that flow. Like we are really just we know instinctually what we're doing. A lot of the time, we don't even need to discuss it. We just kind of do it. Mm -hmm. And then everything else, what I worry about the most is you, you, we work on an album. Then I start to get really nervous about handing it over to like anyone outside of that, like anyone outside of that, that the cell of what we are, like anything outside of that, mm -hmm. I get nervous about because I just, I can't control how they behave. Like I trust people, but I don't really know like how it's going to be, um, how the music, music is going to be affected and then more and more people kind of build around it and then and then the, the control and the and the um i'm very precious of it and it, it, it you know the promotion of it and things like, like like you were describing like the promotion and the and the, mm -hmm, the mm -hmm. performances and all that kind of stuff is it's a, it's a balance for me and i actually find that the bigger the show, the easier it is. Like if I was to do a show with like a hundred people, it would be, it, I'd be far more nervous. 
so uh-huh. I do sympathize with you. Like I, Cause, yeah, because like the response is more direct. Yeah, you can see their faces, like more, you can see their expression, yeah. and I imagine from doing your, what you're doing, there's not much expression. Maybe it's not. It's maybe it's a bit like well, with us, like it's music, so people feel like they can maybe dance a bit or they can like you know they can chat mm-hmm. a little bit, or have a drink. Like I imagine in, when you're doing like a a, a lecture, it's um, it's just, I imagine it's petrifying. Uh, well, uh, I mean, uh, the the part I didn't like is that, uh, well, you don't control the response to your work. You you might have spent like two years uh, doing a project and then you present mm-hmm. it and the response might not be as exciting as you have imagined <laughs> or they might actually completely criticize it out. Right, <laughs> so right, right. that's also a possibility. But the uh, what, what, what actually kind of, changed my approach to that as actually the therapy itself because i was also going to therapy and um they uh, like the uh well not the advice but like kind of the tip to deal with this was that uh this is really a game uh like a video game uh, right. you you don't you don't quite control everything in the video game right because there right. are rules you have to play with but in the end of the day you do right <laughs> And yeah. the, at the end of the day, you get used to it. You're, you know, right, right. you know how to play this. Um, so yeah. I think that this playful approach kind of helped me to uh, change my view, and you know, and it, it and it resonated pretty similarly to what you uh, what what you said about going to concerts and perform. Like, yeah, yeah. you can close your eyes and just yeah just enjoy yeah. the process. And I and I do like whilst being uh, more on the in, introverted side of the spectrum, I there is a part of me that that really enjoys people's response to what I do, like you know, and I and I and I, I've always, uh, you know, I've always been attracted to the idea of being able to move people. So I've, you know, performing in a way where you are with certain tracks that we play live that have certain moments where I can feel the audience change. Like I can feel their emotions mm-hmm. being um, manipulated is, a, is a, a bit of a weird word, but, you know, I can feel the room change. And, and those moments uh, are can be very, very profound. It's just, you know, it's 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 a beautiful thing that human beings are capable of and it's, it's one of the few things that i um you know, I, I try and word this without sounding incredibly uh egotistical like it's, it's um, emotions i don't understand like i i i you know i i i'm fascinated by how a pe- you know a painting for example can really bring somebody to tears mm-hmm. And it's, mm-hmm. I'm drawn to that. I'm just so drawn, like, uh, across all kinds of mediums, like painting or music or acting is a big one. Yeah. Uh, what is your last painting, actually? <laughs> I was going to ask. Well, I'm working on a few at home, which I'm using oil, which is an absolute nightmare. And um, it means that, like, I have to <laughs> I be a lot imagine. more patient. <laughs> yeah, it's so bad. Like, I... I <laughs> I just don't know what's what I'm, what I'm doing with it. it. It you take the tiniest amount and it mm. feels like it just is endless. So you can't you can't clean it. Mm-hmm. I don't know how I'm supposed to like. Yeah, so see, that's part of it, right? That's part of the process. The the material is part of the art itself. Yeah, it is. It is, and for a lot of people, it is. It's the most important thing, or it's a big part of it. For me, though, it's really. Obviously, I prefer, I prefer oil because of the texture, and it looks to me, it just it looks better. It looks denser, and it and it um, the way that the way that light interacts with it is better. But I, if it was up to me, like um, to me, it's the way the way that the I don't care what it what it is that I use. Like, if you see what I mean? I want the best result. But if acrylic was the best, I'd use acrylic and uh so it's a bit it's a little bit annoying also because i have the attention span of of, you know a a very small attention span so working on an oil painting i just want it finished Mm -hmm. and i just want that end result and and i get 
impatient and I end up working on a lot of different things. So at the moment, I've got a lot of different paintings that I'm working on at home. Mm-hmm. And I go through phases where I'm not working on, I, I like I have all this stuff that's like half made and half finished and I won't, I can't bring myself to finish it for some reason. Like it's, it's a weird thing where it's like maybe the, 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 the half a painting half finished is, is easier to live with than one that I've decided is finished. Mm-hmm. Because yeah. at least then I've got to take responsibility. Like if it's finished, I've got to take responsibility for it. Whereas when it's halfway done, I can say, well, it's not finished yet, so. <laughs> well, that's also like a like an approach, some kind of an approach to yeah. Uh, yeah. again co- cooping to, with the with the response to your art <laughs> with what you create. Actually, a friend yeah. of mine who who was in an architecture school, she said um, the first thing they teach you is they give you canvas. Um, and they tell you to uh, do whatever they want with the canvas, and they throw it away. <laughs> right. <laughs> so you, you can draw. You can, you know, uh, you can use pencil to draw. Right. It. But the, 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 you, you have to know in advance that the canvas is going away. So it's not like you're, you're right. yeah. Right. <laughs> so that I love- helps you with. I, I yeah. love those. Sorry to interrupt. I love those art school yeah. like kind of. Um, briefs like i absolutely love doing that because I, I i studied fine art university and i love getting a brief and thinking of like how i can like deconstruct it the, the furthest you know like what's the furthest i can get away from what everybody else is doing or i think is going to do <laughs> yeah <laughs> this is this is something i really really miss in <laughs> science because yeah. you don't you don't have that much because yeah I mean there there is a topic that you work on and uh, it, well it's pretty standardized uh, you don't you know you don't get to move left and mm. right too much mm. and this is something I really miss in science um, right is yeah. there um is there a is there a I don't know is there a field in like of, of science where you where you can be like creative with with what you have. To some extent, uh, I think there is. Uh, Arm, yeah, go ahead. Yeah, yeah, go ahead, please. So yeah, I think to some, there some fields are more, in a sense, free are more creative than mm-hmm. others. But in mm-hmm. general, like there is a pretty, predefined path, pretty predefined, mm-hmm. uh, you know, standards, uh, which Wonderful. you have to work in. Yeah. Okay. Yeah, I, I find it quite fast. Like, I imagine that. You know, I could find, I could see myself being drawn to, to the um, well. I am drawn to like facts and rules and 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 order. And there is something quite beautiful about um, the objective ob- objectiveness of mathematics and science. So in in a way that is, that maybe there is creativity, but maybe not in a in a in a way that is like infinite. Yeah. Uh, it certainly isn't. Yeah. Yeah. Actually, so uh, I mean, I had this, uh, I had this conflict going on in me for quite a while. Uh, a friend of mine, for for, for that occasion, a friend of mine told me that, uh, well, art is like a devil. If if it bites, there is no way out. There is no other way you can interact with the world after it bites. So yeah. uh, <laughs> does that does that resonate? Oh yeah, I think yeah, definitely. I think I think I've I've I don't know when it when it, when you know when I was bitten, but I've I've always I can't, you know I think maybe you could say that I've always been very self-aware and like existentially like, and I think maybe that um, maybe that's similar in a way that like. Art for me is it is quite spiritual and um, and magical. Like I'm, I, I love like I remember seeing you know uh, art college like the Kazmir uh, Malevich black square mm-hmm, mm-hmm, painting, mm-hmm. and I'd never really seen anything like that before. Like I'd I'd seen abstract art and then I knew I knew a little bit about it and I was learning about it and then this black square just my tutor was. Sh- showing it to me and um it really felt 
like it was something uh like mythical like something that i could, just couldn't really get my head around you know to, you know it, all it is 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 ink on a on a piece of paper but what what it represents like abstractly, like, you know, like a portal into something else maybe, or maybe it's just a finite point. Like it's just saying like, this is, this is, this is one thing and that's all it is. I don't know. But once I saw that everything did change and I, I still since then have not been able to really like, I don't think I've ever really been able to um, progress from, because I did a lot of black squares myself after that, and mm -hmm. the idea of just just um, creating something whole and pure, or representing a concept mm -hmm. that is that is pure, you, I don't think you can ever do that. So it's a weird kind of struggle that I've had. But yeah, I definitely I feel like art is a religion for me, and it. I can't so really this is, yeah, yeah. This is Same actually, here, actually. Uh, yeah, yeah. This is actually what, what I hate about myself. When you now talked about uh, Malevich, and uh, I, I, I immediately started thinking, well, this is Russian avant-gardist movement. Uh, yeah, there is a cultural. So I try. I started oh, no, to. No. Yeah, overanalyze that mm. uh, and try to understand. Yeah, there is a cultural right. context. There are so this is like a personal deformation. I think I, I can't just say yeah, this is a magical spiritual thing. It, it's right. just I can't approach art emotionally for some reason, or right. not not whole, all the time. And the, yeah, this is I I hate about myself. <laughs> yeah, the, just that. The, Sorry, go on. Yeah, same is here actually, but um, I mean, uh, lastly, it has changed. I don't know why someday when I do, when I uh, when I was doing my recordings, I just uh, decided to listen to myself and uh, and and took uh, took two pencils and start to play drums in my laptop keyboard mm. and <laughs> and started to record it, and it was like. Uh, you you have mentioned about flow in psychology flow state so yeah. I, I i suppose i have been in that flow state so uh, right. generally we, we are we are we, we face that flow state sometimes in dreams as well and yeah yeah we, we can we can see ourselves doing something that we really enjoy we really enjoy the process without thoughts and sometimes that happens in dreams, I suppose as well. Yeah, that's a good way to think about it. I guess, I guess it's uh, the kind of um, your your subconscious mind is is more more at the front of your of your being. Like you know, when you're dreaming, like um, there's no uh, um, I can't describe it. You know, there's no. <laughs> there's no like kind of like stark awareness of of uh of being alive like you're kind of it's the time is irrelevant and things and i, I guess when you're in that flow state i guess that's why i'm drawn to it maybe a little bit is that um and you know, like video games are a big one for me like i have a like a pc at home and i have a, you know I'm, I'm always looking for like the best equipment and the games that i play are very very immersive and and it mm -hmm. really does mm -hmm. just just quieten quietens down my, uh, you know, like the, the 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 default mode network in my brain. Like it just it just turns turn just lowers that down a little bit so that I can just operate and and um, do something, you know. And I've I've always found that like I do need to be paying attention to something. Mm -hmm. um, Otherwise, um, otherwise, I get anxious. I get really anxious, and I get very um, irritable. And I don't know what that is, but um, <laughs> you know, I, I've learned about it though, which is a good thing. Because for a long time, I didn't know what I didn't know what that was. And and uh, it's only really like last couple of years that I've managed to to kind of accept it a bit, and and also see it as a strength as opposed to a weakness. But 
but yeah, going back to what you're saying as well about um, seeing art and looking at it a bit more, you know, academically, it's a good thing in a way. Like I, I wish I had a bit more of that in, in certain areas in, uh, in that I would like to be able to like kind of have a bit more of a map of art history in my, in my mind academically. Mm-hmm. And I went mm-hmm. to art school and I studied art history, um, mm-hmm. but it just it just it wasn't as, as as important to me. So I think it's it's good that you had that. But I imagine that maybe you, you have a bit, a bit more of an academic kind of background than maybe I do. And and when it comes to art, that's just the way that you're you habitually you kind of look at it and. Or maybe you haven't really, that, really seen anything that, I don't know. But it's actually impressive you realize that that early. I mean, a lot of people, especially I see that in science, a lot of people uh, end up being scientists just because, just because by default, just because they started mm-hmm. being scientists. Right. <laughs> so they, uh, at, at, no, at no time do they ask the question like, is this the, really the something I uh, I'm into? Is this right. really something? Uh, you know, does th- does this tell me anything about the world? Does this you know, is does this satisfy me? It's just you know, yeah, uh, I'm able to do this, so I'm doing this. Right, um, right. And that's yeah. sort of like that sucks. A lot of people just, and I think myself included, uh, to some extent. So. Well, I've, I've fact you realize the academic, you know, uh, academic thing is not quite what you wanted is impressive. Well, I think it's, I think it's a bit of, I was, I was a lot, when I was younger, I was a lot more, um, I still am, but like, I, I really, I really only lived in the moment. Like I, I, I didn't ever like consider the future like i just i just i just op- existed within the hour like and and i and i and i've worked on that and I'm, I'm i've got a lot better at that but my tendency if i was to be if i was to stop monitoring monitoring myself and stop working on myself i could quite easily just stop doing the things that um are good for me and just slip into a, a um, very self-destructive um self-gratifying uh selfish way of living Mm -hmm. and i think that's give me a lot of it's a gift but it's a curse because i i i think you know like we were saying like i i have i think i did grow up being like these these are things that are important to me and these are things that are passionate that i'm passionate Mm -hmm. about and that's what Mm -hmm. i'm going to focus on you know i i grew up playing the drums i was completely obsessed Mm-hmm. I completely obsessed and I and I and I learned how to play I taught myself like I learned how to play by listening to music and figuring it out in my head and then whenever I got access to a drum kit I would I would work it out and and I and I and I've been blessed to be able to do that but at the same time I'm 34 and I'm only just learning how to like pay bills properly like you know like <laughs> and I know that a lot of yeah. people find that difficult but I find it particularly difficult. Like, and I'm only just now, I've only just got like a skincare routine. Like I only just now realize that I, I have to eat vegetables at least, at least once a day. Like, you know, mm. like these things, which <coughs> I just didn't yeah. give a fuck about. Like, and, <laughs> you know, and, and I, and I, can and relate. I, I can totally relate. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> and I think deep down in my being, I still don't give a fuck about, but, <laughs> I've learned that, like, I do want to live past fifty, and and I and I, in order for me to enjoy things, and in order for me to do the things that I really love doing, for as long as I can, I have to, I have to do those things. So I have to brush my teeth, you know, I have to drink water at least once a day. But it, it's hard, you know, uh-huh. it, it can be very hard finding that balance. But I've not been able to do it without the help of other people either. Like I. I it's taken a while, but um, so yeah, I'm I'm blessed in that in the way that I I I'm just, I'm so I'm so like starkly aware of like my own mortality. I think that that the reason that these things are so important to me is that because because the fact that 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 I'm here is a miracle. I fact, anybody is any any of us are here 
to me is is a miracle and and you can look at you can like explain things scientifically and and but there's still something which is just as far as i'm aware anyway like consciousness is is to me like um some myth still and 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 i want to be able to experience it for as, as long as i can so Mm. Um, yeah. Um, actually, I don't know why I want to ask this, but what do you feel like every time listening to Joy singing for the future tribute of Tom Sunny Green in, a, in the song? Yeah. <laughs> yeah. A few things. Yeah. I, I, part of me is flattered. Like, part of me is like, you know, that Joe and I have. A friendship which is beyond a friendship like it, it you know it's cliche but it's like we're like brothers and mm. the reason i say that is just because what we do is in a band and the way that we are friends is it does transcend um mm -hmm. the, the friends that come and go like in your life and um i, I i'm very flattered that because for somebody to write a song about you is like it, it when you think about it it's it's difficult and it, and it's he's opening up and he's being vulnerable and and I'm flattered but at the same at the, on the other side of it I'm like is he is he uh predicting something like is he um hmm. you know um is this a way to I don't, I don't know like the kind of um the critic my self critic is is yeah like what's he saying <laughs> <laughs> um but I don't challenge it because that's his art you know and I, and I respect it and uh I I'm not offended or I'm not um I'm not like I'm I'm flattered if anything so it's a beautiful song as well me personally listening to that part every time I, I have a uh, small depression as um what i feeling uh what i what i feeling listening to that words uh, is when a soulmate sings about uh, sings uh, sings about another soulmate so mm. so it's it's like a uh, kind of unique feelings and um I, I imagine I imagine myself uh, that a, a friend of mine uh, tells a similar words uh, after I pass away. So that, that's why I have uh, yeah. kind of the depressed depressed feeling. Yeah, you're uh, right. Yeah. Uh, so, but I mean, a friend of mine who is actually a philosopher, he called this kind of friendship um comradery uh, however cliche it might it might sound when there is something other than just your relationship just your you know friendship something yeah. else which you can't quite understand mm -hmm. uh, it's i it might be ideological it might be you know uh, whatever but right. you can't quite understand but there is something and so yeah. you kind of called it comradery in an old Soviet way. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Yeah, it's, yeah, there there is there there are uh, they're very, very rare as well, you know, those those relationships, you know, uh Joe and I Joe and I have fallen out on tour before and and and, and you know and we've fallen out badly and, and it was a period of about two months where we couldn't we couldn't we didn't say a word to each other and we were on tour. Mm. You know, and we were in the same dressing rooms same tour bus same flight it's on the mm -hmm. same showing the same stage together we couldn't we couldn't look each other eye in the eye for two months mm. and and that that's i think only comes because we care about each other so much like if i didn't care i wouldn't have found it that difficult you know and i know that he found it difficult as well mm -hmm. and if it was just another friendship then it then it then it well, um, you know, the reason that the re the fact that neither of us were really wanting to give in as well, I think, says a lot. Mm -hmm. So, by the way, very fortunate. 
Yeah. If there is not, by the way, if there is not a pandemic situation, so you should be at in Russia after eight days, I suppose, at 15th of July, right? And yeah. You, you, you should visit giving concert in St. Petersburg and mm -hmm. Moscow. As we, 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 we actually, we are nation being uh, part of USSR and that's very interesting. What what thoughts you have about Russia? As, 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 as that was not going to be your first time being in Russia. You have been there many times. So it's mm. interesting what kind of thoughts do you share about Russia? Do you have about Russia? Well, it's I'm I'm quite naive and, and ignorant to um, to to the kind of like tapestry of like Mm. global politics to be honest mm. i mean i don't like the way that um from what i've seen you know the way that uh the government can, treats their own people i think every country has problems with that and yeah you know that uh, you know that how putin is <laughs> You know, I've got to be careful what I say because I mean the the, re the reason that we do play there is because is because there are people there that are fans of our music, mm -hmm. and 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 my job in the band, you know, or you know the jobs band part of it is to is to share that with people. Otherwise, otherwise we do it and we don't release it and we keep it to ourselves. So mm -hmm. I think we 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 owe it to um, to fans wherever they're from to share it with them. And I've only had good experiences when I'm there. Like, you know, despite what uh, I'm, what I might be going through myself, like, mm -hmm. Uh, mm -hmm. it's been great. Like, the fans there are very, um, they're very, they're very respectful and they're very grateful. And it, and it, it feels like playing anywhere else. So it, it we've played in controversial places before, and, um. It is tricky. Like there are certain places that that as time goes on, I have I would maybe have more of a problem playing. But um, it's always talked about between the three of us and our management, and we usually come to come come to the conclusion that um, imagine being if I put myself in in the shoes of a fan. Mm -hmm. Imagine mm -hmm. there's a 15 year old Russian boy in Fran in in Russia who. Mm -hmm is a big fan and knows that we're going and, and for him, it's a way to escape and maybe it's a way for him to connect with something that he loves and maybe people that are like-minded, then I'll do that. Yeah. And uh, actually, interestingly, you have many fans in Armenia as well, a, a kind of cans you have described it just, and somehow your music... And actually disproportionately many, I would say. <laughs> yeah, 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 yeah. <laughs> actually, right. Just just yesterday, just yesterday, three of my small network on Facebook shared like songs of all J, and somehow your music re resonates a lot with the mood and emotional basis of Armenian Yev. This might right. or might not have do with the poor average mental condition of the younger generation dealing yeah, with that's feeling. Yeah, maybe I don't know. Just, just this is just supposition. But so uh, I I have this question: Have you ever heard about Armenia, and what particularly do you know? Because I, I I suppose that's going to be very interesting and very personal for for our followers. Right. I I'll be honest. I don't know a great deal about Armenia. Mm -hmm. Yeah, it's something that um, it's it's not coming my radar too much. Mm -hmm. but, but have you ever heard at least about Armenia as a country? Yes, yeah, yeah. Give, give us a hope. <laughs> <laughs> oh, yeah, no, of course I Of course, yeah. yeah, yeah. <sighs> I mean, uh, yeah, the thing is Armenia is pretty small and small not only in terms of like the square kilometer count or population count. Uh, it's small in, you know, uh, ambitionally, I would say, um, right. in, in any other sense. So people are pretty, when, when you live in Armenia, you live with everyone else. It's kind of, okay. you have a close relationship with everyone else. I think this is part of why um, well, your music kind of resonates, because it's, it's so, I don't know, comforting 
So, um, okay. Yeah, yeah, I, I can't find words how to. Yeah, I've 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 heard that before, and 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 uh, from many different places and many different. Yeah. People, like, I can imagine it, that. Yeah, and that is a really beautiful thing that I, I I think that's testament to to Joe and to Gus as well to an extent. You know, Gus is involved in the lyrics, and I think it's testament testament to them. Um, Joe is very very good at um, uh, um, putting himself in other people's shoes and and expressing things. Uh, on behalf of other people, or maybe like his idea of what it might be like to be in a certain situation, and and uh, I, I forget that to be honest. Like I forget that that, it, that the music resonates with with a variety of different people. So mm-hmm. when I meet people, or you know, people like yourself, mention it back to me. It's a, it's a gift, you know, to be able to to have that effect on people. Really, yeah. it's incredible. Right. Right. And you do have a pretty, I mean, I can assure you, you do have a pretty uh, large impact, uh, yeah. especially in Armenia, I'd say. Yeah, yeah, it's interesting, but yes. It, yeah. Yeah. Yeah, yeah. It's um, crazy, yeah. And personally, both of us, I suppose. <laughs> right. Yeah. Uh, me and Hike, so, yeah. Amazing. Okay. Oh, are, you, are you guys both, yeah. where are you guys based right now? I'm in Yerevan, and Hike is in Princeton right now. He's doing his PhD in New Jersey. Yeah. Okay, great. Princeton University. And I'm in Yerevan right now. Are you? So, are yeah, you? Uh... The the, the, re- the reason we actually asked the question about Russia is because I lived there for quite a while, seven yeah. years. Uh, oh, you lived there. Oh, wow. And... So oh, well, yeah, sorry. and uh, <laughs> in in general, Armenians are pretty close to Russia. Yeah, yeah, so and also Armenians have special feelings okay. regarding Russia. That's why I have asked yeah. that question. Right, right. Okay. Fair enough. Okay. Okay. Uh, All thank right. you very much, Tom, for thank your time. You, actually, um, this has been quite a conversation, which I think both of us, me and our men, really enjoyed. Um, and I we really do appreciate. Yeah, it's my pleasure. It's my pleasure. Yeah, yeah I, like I said, I I don't. Um, I think I scare people off quite a lot of the time. <laughs> people ask. I don't mind. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, okay. it's been it's yeah. been an interesting conversation as well. Like, I don't have, often get to uh, talk to people of you know who like scientists and that kind of thing. So it's nice. Yeah, thanks. Thank you. Thanks. Okay. My pleasure. Okay. Goodbye. Goodbye. Thank you. Take care. Goodbye. Yeah, you too. Thanks. Bye. Bye. Another stupid day alone.